Konnichiwa! In this series, we're going to conquer the world starting out as a single province, the daimyo of Oda. Let's start by unifying the Japanese islands first. We'll need a ton of admin points to core the entirety of Japan in the next 30 years, so we start with an admin focus. This will slow down our miltech progress, but that shouldn't be an issue since we start with an extremely powerful set of national ideas, 10% morale of armies, and 10% infantry combat ability. We can send a merchant to collect trade in the Hangzhou node and activate established communities in the Nippon node. This this will increase the relations gain with all other daimyo by 15%, which can help us avoid a coalition in the short term. With most other countries having sea access, we'll hang onto our ships to help us speed up the siege progress. Yamana is an excellent ally to take in the early game as they're quite strong and they'll want to ally us most of the time. We also start allied to Chiba, which we can cancel or keep. We'll keep them for now, but drop them in the near future. Hiring the free company isn't required, but I find it can speed up conquest by quite a lot if we don't get alliance locked. We'll be over our force limit by 75%, which can be painful, but we should be able to either avoid loans altogether or at least outgrow them with lots of conquest. For the estates, we take the plus one mana and plus 10 loyalty and influence for all three, as well as religious diplomats for the relations boost, supremacy over the crown for influence and loyalty, patronage of the arts for some prestige, and finally the monopoly on dies. We lose an infinitesimally small amount of income from this, but gain loyalty without influence and some mercantilism. We'll want to reach 100 mercantilism as soon as possible since we plan on directly controlling all trade nodes in the world, and this will help maximize our income before we dominate that node. We summon the diet and get the standard development options. We need to save as much admin and mill points as possible, making merchant guilds the choice. Finally, we seize lands. Don't worry though, we'll be conquering lands so quickly that we won't have these malices for long. The plan is to expand to the east first, so let's take another ally to the southwest. Otomo and Yamana don't hate each other, making them a prime candidate. If they did, we risk jeopardizing our alliance with Yamana. Okay, who else hates having the menus collapsed? It triggers my OCD. We'll end up keeping the alliance with Yamana for a decade or two, so a royal marriage can't hurt. Now we wait until December 11th before doing anything else, which is when we can declare war. If we select rivals before this, it can encourage our neighbors and rivals to get more allies than they normally would get, dramatically slowing down our conquest of Japan. Realistically, there are only two possible targets, Kitabatake to the west or Tokugawa to the east. Toki to our north starts with a level three fort, which requires 9,000 troops to siege down, which would send our economy into an even faster debt spiral. Kitabatake is allied with Uesugi, the largest daimyo to the north, but Yamana would join, which makes this a viable option. Tokugawa has two allies, but only Hatakeyama is willing to join. It's not ideal, but it could work as well. Uesugi has only 4,000 troops in the field at the moment, and we could easily dominate them with the help of our ally. We promise land and declare. Since giving them land isn't a good option, we'll let Yamana deal with their troops in hopes that they peace out after we secure Ise. Our leader will be forced to seppuku soon, so we make him a general and get some use out of him. The biggest risk is having him siege. If our ruler dies during a siege, we lose two stability instead of the standard one. Of course he has a siege pip. Why would you tempt me like this paradox? Let's grab a second general and hope for some shock pips. A 2-2 isn't bad at this stage. We take an admiral as well and blockade to speed up the siege. We can curry favors while the war proceeds, allowing us to call both of our allies into future wars without having to promised land. And as expected, Yamana is proving to be an excellent punching bag for us. They get into a scrap and get stomped. Once the enemy sieges down their land, Yamana should drop out allowing us to peace out without the relations hit for not giving them any land. Our mercenaries have enough morale now so no need to babysit so we head to Uesugi to loot and pillage. We'll want to peace them out for as much money as we can, so taking their capital will be key. Here we go, the AI takes a 21% siege and we're stuck at 49% for months. It seems like Paradox taught Tail Worlds how to do math. With Yamana's capital gone, they pull their troops to re-siege it back and abandon the siege of Uesugi's capital. We finally finish the siege after nearly a year and destroy their fleet as well. Uesugi is taking their lands back now, which leaves us in a bit of a dilemma. We want Yamana to exit the war, but if we destroy the enemy's army, they may stick around even longer. Uesugi makes the decision for us. Looks like Yamana will be stack wiped shortly. A 3-2-1 with a weak claim? we'll lose 5 prestige instead. We reached Yamana at the last second, saving their army. I prefer to take the mana points 90% of the time for events like these. 50 Diplo is a lot in the early game. Luckily, there's no issues with zone of control or military access, so we chase their army right back to their lands. There are very few cases when taking the estate's statutory rights makes sense. It's almost always better to do it on our own through development or conquest. Nice, Yamana backed out. Now we just need to finish off Uesugi and we can complete our first major war. Fortunately, 
the AI isn't too bright, so we take up position next to both of their armies and wait for the inevitable mistake, which doesn't take long. Uesugi is moving to the south without their ally, meaning we can fight the smaller force once they move. Once Uesugi is movement locked, we check the travel time for our troops. We arrive by May 22nd and they leave by May 18th, which is perfect timing. Now they have no army and no province to recruit from, effectively turning this war into a one versus one. We could siege down Uesugi lands and piece them out quickly, but there's a better option. If we completely destroy them here, it's likely that the daimyo surrounding them will declare and gobble them up. This would avoid two things for us, fighting their large army in the future and avoiding a long truce timer for the massive peace deal that we're gonna take. While it's a slower option than short term to destroy them now, it's far better in the long run. We catch them on our capital, but instead of taking the crossing penalty, we reposition to Mikawa and then attack. Wow, I wasn't expecting a stack wipe. Oda strong. Now all that's left is to siege their lands down. While we're waiting for the siege, to complete, it's always a good idea to plan out the next conquest. Tsutsui will soon be our neighbor, giving us an easy CB, and as luck would have it, they have no allies. Hatakeyama has a strong alliance block, but Tokugawa has two allies not willing to join in their defense. I prefer to reposition our troops before declaring, but if we wait, there's a risk that their allies will join. We cancel the curry favors and declare immediately. Time for peace with Uesugi. We ask for all the money and war reps, cancel some rivalries for prestige, and also cancel the alliance with Amago. We don't want to cancel the other alliances since we can attack them in the near future and squeeze them for more cash, if they're still alive that is. We take our first province and another 15 ducats, bringing our balance up to 91. This might be a no loans kind of run, my favorite. Unfortunately, Tsutsui is taken. We'll need a new target after this war. Our little empire is expanding quickly now. With everyone around us having strong alliances, we need to hunker down, curry favors, and stay vigilant for an easy target. I'm so thankful you waited for our wars to be done at least. Look at this Giga Chad 653. It's really good. Now we just need to avoid another seppuku. We can do this by maintaining poor relations with Ashikaga and by expanding rapidly to increase the liberty desire caused by development. In our case, we're going to do both. Time to increase stability to one. It's painful using the admin points, but it's very important to grow up prosperity and to slow down rebellions. Nice. Ashikaga took two base tax from us. This will give us more than enough liberty desire with them to avoid another seppuku. Imagawa has the unfortunate honor of being our next conquest. They took land from another daimyo, so we can expand by two provinces here, and can take another 80 ducats from Uesugi. Who needs the Bank of Ming anyways? Their small army of 3,000 was crossing the province we had our units stationed on, so we declare war right before they leave and get an easy stack wipe. We should be able to carpet siege all provinces before they can recruit any more troops. Looks like we're gonna be rich soon. We stomp the Uesugi navy and capture a transport. Time for peace. Another 80 ducats and 12 per siege. Let's hope they go bankrupt up this time and get eaten up by other daimyo since they're now our neighbors and we'll have another 10 year truce timer. Since we're balling out of control with 200 ducats, we can afford an advisor. Admin or military would make sense here, but I'm a sucker for a deal and we have a half off diplo advisor, so we take that instead. It's free real estate. The prospects are looking slim here and we're stacking up aggressive expansion, so it may be time to improve relations and lay low for a bit. We don't really need the transports for the next 20 years or so, time to replace them with galleys. Hmm, maybe selling these would have been prudent, but I'm feeling lazy and we're basically the Jeff Bezos of Japan right now. Looks like our planning has paid off. Uesugi is being attacked by two neighbors, guaranteeing that they'll be fully annexed. No more waiting for a 10 year peace deal. I wonder what becomes of the loans once they disappear. Utsunomiya took a healthy chunk from Uesugi. Their only the ally is Chiba, which should be a very easy war for us. We wait for the movement lock and blast them from their farmlands province. I guess they want a base race? Time for some more paradox mathematics. Here we go, the shenanigans start. Otomo calls us to a defensive war. We can accept and ignore them for now until we finish our own war. Okay, this has got to be a first for me. We beat the AI in a base race with both of us at 21%. And we pick up two siege pips from our Giga Chad ruler. Wow, another one. We probably should have dumped Otomo earlier. We defend the capital just in time and stack wipe them. We're right in the edge of getting a coalition, so we're only taking land from our main target. We take everything but land for now, since the longer truce timer means one last coalition member that could join. Add another three provinces to the books. Things are moving along smoothly so far. Now the biggest threat is avoiding Ashikaga's wrath. If they declare war on us, we're lost. So for now, we shall content ourselves with defending our ally and taking some money and prestige. This is a tough call. We can't always have great rulers, but having one admin is grounds for being disinherited. I'm 
in danger. Maybe not yet, though, since we have good prestige right now. Time to improve relations with a few people to stay out of coalition range. We don't need to win the war here. Just peace out the enemy for some cash. Okay, we helped this dude out twice already. Time to draw the line. It sucks losing the prestige, but that's what we get for not canceling the alliance on time. Satake has nobody to help them. Time to eat. Still no coalition to worry about yet. Let's keep pushing forward. Ogasawara is allied to Date, and Date is the bigger threat here, so we target their troops first. We can move our troops to their territory, and as long as we declare war before the move is completed, we can catch them off guard. Yep, easy stack white before they even realize we're at war. We could take land from Satake, but it's not quite time yet, as it would lead to a huge coalition. Instead, we'll satisfy ourselves with 36 ducats and 12 prestige. The siege is done, and the coalition is only 3, not enough to form. Toki has no ally to defend them, but we're still short 1,000 troops to siege down their fort, which is an easy fix. It'll cost us a few men from attrition, but on the bright side we'll have a nice fort on a hill province. Taking Mino could potentially cause a coalition or piss off Ashikaga enough to have them attack us, so we can royal marry them to dissuade them from doing this, because it would cause them to lose one extra stability. We have 97 liberty desire, so the royal marriage won't change this enough to be in seppuku range again. 25 ducats and a free fort. We're in great shape now. I really enjoy watching our rebels run into other people's armies. It's about time we break up the Shiba alliance since we need their land soon. We no longer have any allies to call upon, making the threat of Ashikaga declaring on us somewhat more likely. But if we continue to expand quickly, we shouldn't have any issues. We've got a nice pile of admin points saved up, so time to make our territorial cores into full cores, allowing for lower autonomy and more resources for us. I generally don't like to lower autonomy manually until our army reaches the 10,000 mark. Most rebel stacks will spawn with six to 9,000 troops, and fighting them with even troop count is a great way to drain all of our manpower. Diplomana is starting to reach the upper limit, so we pump as much as we can into our capital. In the near future, we'll want to spawn Renaissance, so rather than spreading out the development, we turn on the development edict and click away. We have a strong economy and 300 ducats in the bank, time to hire some advisors. We don't need any more firepower, so we take the cheaper troop wages. We'll need a ton of money soon to upgrade our country. And we take a stab cost reduction for admin, since we'll need it once we break free from Ashikaga. Ouchi is having some issues right now and we can't declare war on Shiba to unseach that land back. So we're in a bit of an impasse until that war ends. I would love to have an in-game reminder for seizing crown lands. I always miss it. Finally, we're above 30 and no longer have debuffs from it. And because I love monopolies, we grant livestock to the Bushi. The Ouchi war is over and it's now our turn. Their ally Ito is movement locked as we declare. Player. A good start to the war. Auchi is the main target though, and we wait for them to be movement locked on this farmland terrain. Rather than chasing them, we siege their lands down, reducing the ability to recruit new troops later in the war. Time to start planning for post-war. We would pick up quite a big coalition if we fully annexed, which might not be a problem at this stage of the game. We also have rebels ravaging our lands, but we need to focus on this war first. As long as they don't enforce demands, which takes about five years, then we should be just fine. We catch them again on good territory and then stack wipe them on their fort. Because we wiped them out, everyone's trying to dogpile on Ochi. Rebel Simulator 2022, anyone? We're starting to get a ton of rebels now, and need to end this war to deal with it. Ideally, we would take all of Ochi and Ito, but it would be a massive coalition. Instead, we take a smaller chunk and a manageable coalition, spend some time dealing with the rebels, and look to expand shortly after. When it comes to dealing with rebels, I like to take the easiest battles first, since it will preserve our numbers the most, which means subsequent battles are even easier without having to wait for full reinforcement. Enforcements. It wasn't as bad as it looked. Wow, even more. I think we've killed more rebels than other daimyo troops at this point. Our mercenaries' manpower is nearly drained, and we need to look at replacing them. Now, nah, let's grind them into the dirt before we release them. Yes, I'm that guy that rolls up toothpaste to the very end. Waste not, want not. Luckily, we can hire another four-stack free company right away. Prestige is looking quite good here, so we can cancel patronage of the arts and get our tax income back. Shiba has no allies making them an easy target. We used to be so close. What happened to us? Our capital is now over 30 development, giving us some splendor for the age objective. We'll hold off on getting renaissance for a little bit longer though. We don't want it to spread across the seas to Ming or Korea just yet. We'll fully annex Shiba here, giving us another easy target by way of Ando in the north. They have no allies and not enough navy to stop us from crossing. I really love this event since army professionalism is such a pain to farm. At this point, we're all in. No more worrying about coalitions, we just need to start wars and expand as fast as possible. We also need to fabricate claims on Ainu since we want those lands as well. Our next target will be Kono, 
who is allied to Date at the other end of the island. Our navy can keep them isolated down south, so we focus on Date first. The siege is done, but now we've got to worry about rebels again. Getting stacked white by rebels is always embarrassing as a player, but it happens sometimes. The AI is doing AI things. Big brain move, bro. Well, at least we don't have to fight these rebels in the hills anymore. Okay, I was just making a comment about this exact situation. Luckily, we get there just in time to lose even more troops for nothing. I'm a stupid moron. We just need to consolidate our troops and they won't be a problem. Miltech 5 is available and I prefer the defensive pips. I plan on doing some unit testing when the new patch comes out, so I'll have data to back up my reasoning. We can fully annex both of them, leaving only a single OPM to the east and the fort at Mino keeping everyone in the west out. A little bit of patience has paid off and the rebels are stuck on our hill fort. And while we still have a rebel problem, we won't let that stop us from reducing autonomy. We still have a ton of diplo points, so it's time to push for renaissance. It'll take some time to get there, and the plan is to rival Korea and Ming to avoid spreading it to them directly. Chiba is now on the menu. We can solely focus on the south, then Ashikaga, and finally Ainu to the north. Yamana is allied to Seoul, and we were fortunate enough to have captured some transports since we trashed our previous stack. Looks like the Ming Emperor was captured by Oirat. You don't see that too often from the AI. This is far from ideal, but our general has better pips. Plus, they rolled a zero. As they say, you can't count on luck, but luck does count. Full annexation for both and we're down to three daimyos left. You almost start to feel bad for these guys. They knew it was coming. Shoni is next and we finished the war with Ouchi so we can have a border with the final daimyo. We won't be needing the forts in the south here and I would rather have more money than army tradition at this point. We have a bit of a mess to clean up with all the rebels then we can finish off Ashikaga. We'll need lots of admin soon to stab up so this agenda will come in handy. We also pick up another monopoly, textiles this time. And now that we own most of Japan it makes sense to switch up our merchants to transfer into the Nippon node and change the trade policy back to maximize profits. Ugh, this part always hurts to do, but it's a necessary evil. We march before declaring war to ensure they can't escape, and we take a massive stability hit. One thing to keep in mind, our governing capacity drops to 50, so we're severely over our governing cap. But once we upgrade our government rank, it goes right back up to 250. We leave a thousand troops behind to prevent them from recruiting and chase the main army back to Kyoto. And there goes the last of our tyrannical overlord, Ashikaga, is no more. In this run, we'll keep the Shogunate because it's a ton of fun managing hundreds of daimyo. It's 1475, so it took us just over 30 years to conquer and fully core everything. It's not the fastest, but our country is in great shape. We have no loans and already have Renaissance in the works. We do get to rival Korea, so they won't get it from us. Thankfully, we have three claims and Ainu and Koring will be quick and cheap after we wipe them out. We could spend time taking Enchiv for the full annexation, but it's not a priority right now. It also becomes a target for Ming when we go to war with them later and I prefer them to drop troops on our main Japanese islands than up north. We've dealt with the last of the rebels for now, but burned through so much manpower to do it and we have quite a few more spawning soon. We can take our first age bonus, but I made a mistake here. Transfer subject would have been much more appropriate based on what we have planned in the next couple years. Instead, we take justified wars since we'll be expanding quite fast and delaying coalitions is helpful. We hire the Grand Company to help us clean up at home and our main army will be heading abroad very soon. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and comment below what you think our next step should be. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.